Welcome to Nuclear Proliferation Explained. I'm William Spaniel. This is the first in a series of lectures on the causes and consequences of nuclear proliferation. Let's get to it. Since the dawn of the nuclear era and the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, nuclear weapons have been central to international relations. This was most evident during the Cold War, when the United States and the Soviet Union each had enormous nuclear arsenals designed to back up their geopolitical ambitions. But even after the Cold War ended, nuclear weapons still remained relevant. Think back to the Iraq War. One of the motivations that the United States had to remove Saddam Hussein from power was the perceived threat of Saddam Hussein developing nuclear weapons. Even today, nuclear proliferation is important. An underlying tension in the Middle East is Iran's nuclear program and their capability to produce nuclear weapons. Whether they will ultimately still remains undecided, and of course Iran claims that they have no interest in doing so. This leads to a number of important questions. One of them is easy to answer. Who has nuclear weapons? Another is easy enough to answer if you can study some science. How do you build nuclear weapons? Then we get to more social science questions. Why do states choose to proliferate? How do nuclear weapons affect war? And how does the non-proliferation regime work? These are the topics that we're going to be studying in this series of lectures. As some background on who I am, I'm an assistant professor at the University of Pittsburgh currently. Before that, I was a Stanton Nuclear Security Postdoctoral Fellow at Stanford University's Center for International Security and Cooperation. And yes, that's a mouthful, but the Stanton Foundation is one of the primary funders of nuclear weapons research at the moment. So a lot of what we will be learning in this class can be traced back to Stanton's generous funding. Meanwhile, the Center for International Security and Cooperation is a really fascinating place to work because it combines social scientists with physical scientists to get new innovations in research. Before that, I was a PhD at the University of Rochester, and I am the author of Bargaining Over the Bomb, The Successes and Failures of Nuclear Negotiations. You can learn more about that book in the video description, but in fact, we will be covering a lot of what is inside of that book in future lectures. Hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you're excited to see more about nuclear proliferation explained. Take care.